hi, my name's John. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager for Celestian. I've been here almost 20 years now, I think. Celestian were really at ground zero when it came to, uh, to guitar speakers. We, we built our first uh, purpose-built, purpose-designed guitar speaker way back in 1957, 58, to go into the, to the, um, the combos that were, that were just emerging back then, you know, in time for the, the early days of rock and roll. And we've been innovating guitar speakers ever since, really. You know, that, that first uh, speaker became what's now the Alnico Blue, and that was followed in a few years later uh, by the by the greenback, the G12M and the, the G12H greenbacks that were in the in the 4x12s of the 1960s, and all those guys who were who were rocking the stadiums back then, they were all using full stacks with with those speakers in them. And, and really, that's been um, the story ever since for Celestian guitar speakers. It's uh, it's a case of, of innovating and continuing to to improve and diversify our range of, of speakers, and that's that's come through lots of different. Uh, routes, whether it's customers asking us for different tones or whether it's amplifiers getting higher powered and they're having to, to create a, a speaker that's, that's better suited to you know, a 50 watt amp or a 100 watt amp as, as, you know, as amplifiers got more powerful. So that's really been the, uh, the DNA of, of Celestian guitar speakers. So we've been um, working in partnership with Blackstar well, probably ever since the, the company began uh, and uh, we're, we're very happy and proud to, to have that association. So, so Blackstar approached us, um, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago or so, just to talk about a, a more lightweight speaker uh, and we spent some time uh, developing a few ideas and, and came, came up with the, with, with the Zephyr concept uh, and I think what we've got in the end is, is, a, is a really nice sounding speaker and I think it will work well uh, with this new range. Hi, I'm Paul Cork, Head of Engineering. It was great. Um, after picking up and carrying lots of combos around in my life, about time someone was going to do a lightweight version. Um, we've seen and in the last few years PA and bass guitar adopting lighter woods, lighter amplifiers. And this is the first time I really heard that a guitar speaker company was going to uh, be doing it. There was a bit of brainstorming involved, um, but there's, you know, in a manufacturing sense, um, there are certain kind of set rules that you can use to get a product. Um, and we, we kind of ad adapted our designing and adapted the manufacturing processes uh, to basically pull all the weight out of the driver that we could. Um, but without fundamentally affecting its performance. Um, so we maximised the efficiency of the, the magnet assemblies. I mean, the development process itself um, uses a lot of uh, finite element analysis, um, which is basically a, an engineering process that's been developed for you know, the last 50 years or so. Basically, you, you have one big problem and you break it down into lots of small problems, um, which are then solved by a computer and then, uh, then the answer is assembled and you get a result out. And basically with, with the process that we used for this, it was um, just looking at the magnet flux and how the magnet flux goes around the, um, the whole magnet assembly and through the gap, which is the, the gap flux, which powers the voice. Um, we can show you some uh, pictures uh, when we get into the office. So I mentioned the uh, um, FEA downstairs. I'm just going to go through a quick example. Um, so this is a typical magnet assembly um, of front plate, magnet and uh, pole plate. Um, and I've drawn this on the screen. This is the magnet, this is the pole plate and the front plate. Um, and in the FEA world, uh, you basically uh, add, a, add a mesh to it and at each intersection of the bits of mesh uh, there's applied a, a mathematical equation and there's a, a finite number of mathematical equations, hence the term finite element analysis. Um, it's all very boring, um, really, and it will basically tell us the flux in the magnet assembly, which is what we're interested in. And this is basically the, the flux pattern inside the magnet assembly. So um, the yellow sections are areas where the flux is at its highest and the blue, the blue and the, the reddish is when the flux is lowest. Now what we did with the Zephyr was, um, we assumed that the, the, the darker blue areas of the metalwork weren't actually doing anything. So to save weight, we basically 
took them off. So we so we we removed the metalwork from these positions and through the, the centre, and eventually we came up with this, which is basically the Zephyr magnet assembly. So you see, we've removed a lot of the metalwork here, all the metalwork here, and all the metalwork in the middle, and all that is to save weight. Um, the, the magnet is, itself is smaller, so to, to bring back more of that flux, we've put a second magnet on top of the pole piece here, um, and there it is, a, a Zephyr magnet assembly. Um, we have a listen um, before, uh, to pretty much everything before we send it to the customer. Um, obviously, we don't listen to the speakers in the exact same cabinets in the exact same um, environments. So, you know, we can't say that it's going to be exactly how the customer hears it. But we had a listen. It sounded um, a really nice sounding driver. Um, and we, we, we sent the first prototypes off to Blackstar. Um, they gave us some feedback on the on what they heard. Um, we then adapted the design slightly, sent them the, the the revised version in, and and I think that was the one that we're now moving into production with. It was kind of a vintage vintage tone, um, but with a versatile twist to it, if you like. So it's it's a driver that works well in clean. Um, has the, has the great vintage breakup that, that you know a lot of players like, but you can also stick a distortion pedal on it, and it'll still hang together and give you a, a credible sound without turning into mush or anything. So it's a, but basically it's it's a, it's a good all rounder. So basically this this is um, the the size of magnet in a in a traditional design. Um, and you see the the thickness of the metal plates and the, the diameter of the magnet. And so using the FEA um, work, we were able to um, dramatically reduce the diameter of the magnet assembly. Uh, we've skimmed a lot of the metal work out, which all removes weight. And to bring some of the sensitivity back, um, there's a second magnet that sits on top of the, the pole piece uh, inside. Um, so basically it's got, it's got two magnets rather than one, but they're both a lot smaller. Um, and basically produce the same amount of uh, sort of energy as, as this size magnet. So, so um, using the FEA work, we've managed to get the um, magnet assembly weight down from uh, 3.5 kilograms uh, to, to 2 kilograms on the Zephyr.